Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak here today. Uh, as to the Kalamazoo story, I'd like to tell you a little bit about it, um, but this will be more of an um, investment focus than, a, than a, certainly a um, technical presentation. Um, the first question most people do ask is where did the name Kalamazoo come from? Um, my brother Matt and I uh, started Kalamazoo about 10 years ago. We kept it private for about seven or eight years and then uh, did an IPO about two or three years ago. Um, our first project was actually up in the Pilbara and we'd been exploring there for a while and there's actually a train line that used to run between um, our property from Marble Bar to Port Hedland. And, uh, on that railway line was a, uh, an old train that used to run and it took its name from the city in which it was built, which is Kalamazoo in the US. Usual disclaimer, I'm a lawyer, I've read it, I think it's okay, but if anyone um, wants to have a look at it, it'll be on our website shortly. So if, perhaps I'd just like to introduce you to some of our team here as well. Um, Angus Middleton is a non-exec director, he's very experienced uh, share broker, ex-share broker out of Adelaide, he's here. Um, also Dr Luke Mortimer, who's our exploration manager. Um, and if you've got any technical questions, please come to our booth and I'm sure, um, sure Luke will be able to fill you in. Um, from this slide, you'll see that our stock um, is pretty tightly held, our largest shareholder, about 36%. Um, unlike some of the, our other peers here today in Victoria, um, We've got a very minor and you know, very small market cap of just $25 million at this point in time, which is significantly less than our peers. However, we do have a nice upward trend on our share price. If you're here today, I'd assume that you're pretty bullish on gold. Why would you come to a gold conference otherwise? Um, as far as I'm concerned, gold is good, and there's nowhere better to invest than in Australia, where in Aus dollar terms, the gold price has gone from um, $460 to $2,200 in a terrific 20-year trend line. But as with all investments, the focus should be on quality. And I'd like to show you why the Victorian gold fields shine better than anywhere else. I'd suggest that if you're here today, you're probably looking to invest in gold stocks that have not yet been recognised by the market properly. And I think um, we have potential to actually increase significantly in value. It, and for you, it's the usual risk versus reward. I believe there's a compelling case to invest in Kalamazoo as we are a low market cap explorer that's well positioned to find a world-class gold deposit. And should we be this successful, this will be definitely reflected in our share price. I trust that I can illustrate to you that we are in the right position with the right projects and the right program. You'll see from this location map um, that we also have um, projects up in the Pilbara. Um, I won't talk about them today, but even though we consider them to be highly prospective. Um, we're based in Melbourne, and due to a family connection with the, with the Victorian gold fields, we've been monitoring the area around Castlemaine for quite a few years, which was Victoria's third largest gold field, having produced almost six million ounces of gold. However, most of that production was well over 100 years ago, and virtually no exploration in the Castlemaine gold fields the last 10 to 15 years, which led for that ground to become available to us in the early 2018. Our timing was very fortunate because we'd been monitoring what Kirkland Lake had been doing at Fosterville, which is just up the road. Um, in acquiring the 200 square kilometre Castlemaine Goldfield, and I'm talking about the entire Castlemaine Goldfield, we inherited some excellent and very valuable data sets. Um, there was a 250 gigabyte database which we cleaned up and we also put in order an 80,000 metre diamond core farm we would think that that replacement value of those data sets has got to be in the order of probably 20 to $25 million. Concurrently though, you know, we're a small explorer. Um, we had to obviously raise sufficient capital to actually hit this project hard. And so what we did was we sold one of our other gold projects in the West, in the Murchison, called Snake Well, and we sold that for $7 million, um, which was completed earlier on this year. Then we did another small raise of about 1.2 million um, in the middle of the year through our brokers, Taylor Collison. You've heard a bit today about Victoria. Um, more than 60 million ounces of gold was produced from the Bendigo Zone, which was the second largest gold field in Australia, and actually was the largest for many, many years, and which underwrote marvellous Melbourne in the period 1850s to 1890s. Bendigo produced about 22 million ounces, Ballarat 10 million, and Castlemaine was the next largest with 5.6 million ounces. The area around our other project at South Muckleford, which I'll talk about a little bit in a moment, also produced more than 2 million ounces and was the seventh largest Victorian gold field. But important uh, for you as investors is that nearly all of this gold was very high grade. 
Interestingly, Victoria's gold geology is considered to be 100 times richer per square, square kilometre than the global average. And again, that's why investing in Victoria is so compelling. For they say, if you want to find gold, go where the gold is found. However, to be perfectly clear, over the last 20 or 30 years, it hasn't been easy to explore in Victoria due to lack of government support and also undelivered promises on a number of mines. However, due to some good government support over the last few years, but more importantly, due to the success of Fosterville, this has now clearly changed. And which, as we all know with Fosterville, it's now clearly one of the world's highest grade and most profitable gold mines. So the key is, is there another one in the Bendigo gold fields? Um, in recent times, you'll have heard that some great success by um, Catalyst, Navarre, Chalice and Staveley. So it means now that Victoria is back on the map. Um, and not surprisingly, the big end of town now is all getting very interested, with um, uh, Newmont now taking a large holding out to the, uh, to the east, um, St Barbara and Hancock prospecting also getting involved. At Castlemaine and South Muckleford, we literally have hundreds of kilometres of strike extent of anticline and reverse fault structures to test. In, on top of that, there's over, just on the Castlemaine gold field, there's over 2,000 shafts that have been put into that field. So the question for us is, where do we start? Because there's no shortage of gold on our land holdings. But the key for us is to ignore the noise of anything less than 10 grams a tonne in, in our pursuit of getting a commercial ore body. But fortunately for us, our projects have been sleeping giants, virtually underexplored and untouched for a century or more. In fact, the only ground geophysical surveys that have actually occurred in the Castlemaine region were more than 50 years ago. And I think, as we all know, the technology advance since then has been very significant. So we're taking a smarter, innovative approach by working with the CSRO on a number of projects. We're doing multi-element surface geochemistry, prospect scale ground magnetics, and induced polarisation surveys, 3D structural modelling, and machine learning. In the short term, we're looking to identify gold mineralised structures for drill testing, most likely in the northern area of the Castlemaine Gold Project. In the medium term, we'll then look at our southern section of Castlemaine, and across to the South Muckleford Gold Project. We believe we're in the right geological neighbourhood. As you'll see from this regional map, our projects, which are marked in dark grey down the bottom, um, are about 45 kilometres from Fosterville, mine, and with Fosterville almost up on our eastern boundary. Um, also to the east, you can see, as I mentioned, the Newmont's up there, and then you know, our friends Catalyst and Navarre chalice are all up to the north. But what I'd like to pull your, draw your attention to is the dark lines that run north-south because they are what control um, all the distribution of gold in the Victoria zone. In addition, you'll see that brown squiggly line and I, I think as a number of people have spoken about today, anything north of that is undercover which makes exploration difficult. Fortunately for us, um, we have an enormous amount of um, uh, you know, a rich mining history into that southern area with a lot of surface expression. I think for a lot of you, people here today who are from Sydney may not be aware of Castlemaine as a, as a region. It's a beautiful part of Victoria, we're only about an hour and a half from the city, and it's got a very rich gold mining history. So the following hopefully might provide some information on that. The Bendigo Zone in Victoria is one of the richest gold fields in the world with more than 60 million ounces of gold produced. Kalamazoo's exploration projects in the Bendigo Zone are located at Castlemaine, South Muckleford and Tarnagulla. The South Muckleford Gold Project is the southern extension of the Malden Gold Field where more than 2 million ounces of gold was historically produced. At Castlemaine, gold was first discovered at Specimen Gully in 1851, with a major gold rush at Forest Creek soon after. The alluvial or placer deposits surrounding Castlemaine were some of the world's richest gold fields. The news of Castlemaine gold rush soon saw more than 30,000 diggers chancing their luck. Official records show 4.6 million ounces of alluvial gold produced in just 11 years. However, it is likely that this was significantly underestimated. 
The gold rush saw great wealth generated for Castlemaine and surrounding areas, with many of the grand buildings still remaining today. After the alluvial gold rush concluded, the focus shifted to high-grade underground mining, with a further 1 million ounces produced from Castlemaine. The richest of these underground mines was at Wattle Gully, which first opened in the 1890s. The Wattle Gully mine was reopened in the 1930s and successfully produced over 400,000 ounces of gold at more than 11 grams per tonne. Further mining was undertaken in the 1980s and 90s. However, a low gold price and lack of capital has seen only limited exploration in recent years. Kalamazoo Resources is exploring using the latest technologies with work undertaken primarily on public or crown land. Exploration to uncover the next world-class gold mine at Castlemaine and South Muckleford is enhanced by excellent infrastructure with the major town of Bendigo, just 30 minutes away, with Melbourne one and a half hours by freeway or train. Kalamazoo Resources, unlocking the Victorian gold fields. As we saw, Forest Creek was considered to be the richest alluvial gold field anywhere in the world. In fact, it's reported that on one small eight square foot claim, a single digger recovered 3,600 ounces of gold, which would be worth almost $8 million today. Bendigo and Ballarat's alluvial deposits have been traced to their primary sources. However, this is not the case at Castlemaine. Our technical people tell me that alluvial gold, due to its weight, doesn't travel far, um, particularly due to the terrain that we have with um, hills and gullies. So on, on that basis, the um, hard rock so source of Castlemaine's very rich alluvial gold must be close by. However, unlike its Bendigo and Ballarat cousins, only 16% of the gold found at Castlemaine has come from underground, compared to 82% of gold produced at Bendigo. If we could determine that Castlemaine indeed has a similar hard rock to alluvial ratio as Bendigo, then I'd suggest to you that there is real potential for a world-class ore body to be discovered within our prospect areas. For you as an investor in gold stocks, I'd suggest that you shouldn't discount the old adage that the best place to look for gold is in the shadow of a head frame. In the Castlemaine area, the gold deposits share the same settings as all the other major economic gold camps in the Bendigo zone, which provides us with exciting potential. Like every other explorer in Victoria, we're looking to see what similarities are there, if any, between Fosterville and our own project areas. What we have seen with the work we've done is that they are very similar primary fault structures with minor cross faults or jogs, which are important traps for the gold fluids. But the real encouragement from this story is that while Fosterville was being mined as a low grade shallow deposit for well more than 10 years, there was no evidence of the Bonanza grades that was found at depth. This supports our belief that, that there is potential for mineralisation repetitions at depth and a long strike at both Castlemaine and South Muckleford. So to have another major discovery in our area of the We consider that there is a complete set of technologies is required for that type of ore body to exist, which we believe will be found at depth. This is a very relevant pointer for us, as the average historical drill holes found at Castlemaine is just 137 metres. So therefore we're taking a smarter, low impact approach using a range of new technologies, innovations that have not been previously applied in that area. Uh, we announced yesterday to the market that we've now just completed two very extensive IP and ground mag magnetic surveys that ran for about three months across our top ten highest ranking projects in the northern part of our Castlemaine project. We are very pleased with the results. And these ge geophysical surveys have mapped the subsurface geology and assisted us in identifying a number of anomalies that provide immediate walk-up drill targets on, alongside some very high-grade historical drill holes. If you'd like to come to our booth sometime today or tomorrow, we can show you the geophysical surveys, historical drilling density and the developing model in an animated 3D structural format. Based on the pos positive results from these geophysical surveys, we awarded a 10,000 metre diamond drilling program to Deepcore, which was announced on Monday. Um, it's a very experienced drilling company with extensive operations in Victoria and also including drilling at Fosterville. Um, the drilling at Castlemaine is planned to commence in the first week of November, so it's just around the corner in the pine plantation, which is relatively, relatively isolated 
and it's been shown to have some very high grade results from previous drilling in 2008, some of which you can see here. So we're now going to test those, those targets identified from the geoph geophysical surveys with our first program or stage one of 10 holes at about 400 metres. But we're going straight to diamond. We're going to hit this hard. And then what we learn from these programs we'll use to refine our conceptual programs, models and targets, which will then feed into a stage two program. Um, and we would expect the first results from that to be in early December. So to recap, the success of Fosterville has highlighted the potential that still exists in Victoria to discover and develop world-class high-grade ore bodies. It's our view that if you want to start searching for the next Fosterville, then South Muckleford and the Castlemaine Goldfield, with its unbelievably rich gold alluvial history, are the best places to begin, especially at depth. So I hope I've been able to illustrate to you today that as a gold investment, Kalamazoo Resources, even if we've got a funny name, has all the right credentials, as we're a company that's well-funded, tightly held, and a mar modest market cap. That market cap, as you would have seen, is a fraction of our peers today, and we think we've got better land holding. We're also operating in a known and very rich gold province and have 100% control of two major gold exploration projects with multi-million ounce historical production. And finally, we're utilising new technologies and innovations and about just to start the first of our diamond drill programs that, if successful, we believe is likely to capture the market's attention. So thanks for listening to the Kalamazoo story. And if you'd like more, please come to our booth.